Hey everyone, welcome back to your mobility and meditation series. For this class, you won't really need anything. I'm sitting on a pillow for the meditation in the beginning of class, so you could grab something to elevate your hips. And if you like to have other blankets or blocks, have them nearby. Today's class will play out a little bit more like a restorative, so be prepared to stay low to the ground and work with hips back of the legs, we'll get into a squat, and we'll also work with some of my favorite upper body openers that will move into our wrists and fingers. So you can begin in a seat, and let's arrive for a few moments. So feel free to roll your shoulders. Maybe it feels nourishing to close your eyes. And you're invited to connect to your breathing. You're invited to find the bottom of your exhalation and be aware of that turning point that turns from exhale into inhale. Couple of breaths. And with your awareness, at the bottom of your exhalation, you're invited to pause at the bottom of your exhale for as long as you would like before you feel the need to inhale again. Perhaps softening the space between your eyebrows, at the back of your jaws, and in the pit of your belly or stomach. And as you're ready, you can let your eyes open if they're closed. And we'll come onto our hands and our knees. You can move your prop out to the side, press into your fingers, and start to shift forwards and back in a tabletop. Pressing into your fingers as if you're pushing yourself back into your feet. You can go beyond the line of your wrists a little bit. And if you like, when you shift forwards, you might lift your knees off the floor for a little added Strength work to your wrists. You can drop that down and take your fingers to point left to right, and this time you can shift laterally side to side. Feeling into your wrist slightly different emphasis point. And again, you can move forwards and back, so rooting into your thumb and your pinky finger. And if you like, as you come forwards into the root of your thumb, you can lift your knees, feeling a little added strengthening to your wrists. And then coming back, you can play with shifting your fingers all the way around to your knees. And here you might circle and press into your fingertips. If this feels like a lot, if this feels like a lot, feel free to walk your knees in so there's a bit more weight in your legs, a little less on your hands. And you can go forwards and back and in the back, you might even bend your elbows and peel the heel of your hand off of the floor any amount. Another option here that I like is keeping a micro bend in the elbow so you have some tone to the front side of your arms and then coming a little off of your knees, adding a little strengthening into this different orientation. You can let that go, shake out through your hands, tuck your toes, and you can sit on the tops of your feet or your toes tucked. I'm gonna to choose toes tucked to come on up. Sometimes I tuck my pinky under. And then interlock your hands and start to figure eight through your wrists one way, and then you can try going the opposite direction. A little brain work there. And then take your hands together, curl your fingernails towards each other until your knuckles hit like that. And then until your knuckles, your fists touch each other. And then press that forwards 
attempting to straighten your arms as you continue to press your top knuckles in towards each other. You might feel a stretch there to the top of your wrist. Nice, well shake that out. Come on forwards, you can pitter patter your feet on the ground. And then let's take our left hand palm face up and slowly begin to straighten our arms, flicking our fingernails into the earth. And then you can curl your fingers in towards the center point of your palm and flick out and curl in and flick out. I'm gonna turn this way so you can see that well. And now you can bend your elbow to tap the floor. And as you come up, shift towards your uh, knuckles and then turn your fist to come onto the inner side of your wrist and roll all the way back through the top side of your wrist. Elbow to the floor, make a fist and shift towards the inside of your wrist and then towards the outside of your wrist, elbow down. Can come up, shake that out, switch sides. So slowly starting to straighten your right arm with your fingernails flicking down. You can do a few curl and opens. No need to straighten your arm too much. You can always link your breath with the movement. And then elbow down, come on up, fist, roll to the inner part of your wrist, roll to the outer part of your wrist, open it up. You can do that a couple times. Exploring all these different areas. We use our hands so much now in this digital world. You can care for your fingers in this way. And coming up and you can shake out your hands. And then taking your hands into fists, taking your fists onto the floor like that. And you can take your thumb on the inside of your index finger there, and then try to roll towards uh, kind of the root of your thumb, roll forwards a bit. If it's a, if it's a lot, walk your knees in so there's a little less weight in your hands and a little more in your legs. And then you can come down and tap your elbows child's form as much as you like. Roll towards your thumb and tap. One more like that. You might rest in child's form, taking your hands forwards and a couple of breaths, perhaps finding the still point at the bottom of your exhalation. You can roll on up there and from your hands and your knees, you can walk your hands forwards. And think about your upper arm bones lifting up towards the ceiling. So instead of your upper arm bones jamming down in the top of your shoulder joint, lift up there, bring your low ribs in and you can take your forehead to the floor or let it hang in space as you press your hands forwards. Think about with both hands as if you're throwing a ball and following through with that throw all the way through your fingers so there's some activity there in your arms. For some of you, you might have uh, the want to come up a bit and take your chest or chin to the ground. Continue to reach out through your arms and melt the back of your heart towards the earth as you tuck your tailbone and draw your front ribs towards your belly button. You might even squeeze your biceps in towards the center for one more breath. Beautiful, so you can lift your armpits, come on back to your hands and knees and arch your spine and then round your spine under. You might link your breath there, arch your spine and round your spine under. Coming to a neutral spine, you can 
tuck your toes here, walk back and start to lift your knees off of the ground. So you might come into a toe squat. You're welcome to widen your feet a little bit more. So your knees go out, your toes go out. Some of you might have your heels come to the ground. Something I used to do when my heels didn't come to the ground is roll my mat up any amount, uh, maybe even all the way towards the front of the mat and let my heels sink onto that support. So with the squat, sometimes I think about feeding my knees into my armpits and bringing my hands together. And letting your back body unravel down towards the earth. And letting your hip creases sink any amount. And from here, you can walk it forwards and start to come up into a forward fold. Parallel your feet. Some of you might have elbows to knees, shifting your hips back and letting your head hang. Some of you might straighten your legs a little bit more and let your spine dangle. Keep your knees as bent as you need. And you're welcome to hold opposite forearms or elbows. And perhaps your forearms clear the top of your head as you let your upper arm bones sink to the earth. And you might find a few of those longer breaths with a slight pause on your exhale phase of your breath here. Perhaps you feel your belly getting longer, belly button moving away from pubic bone. And then we'll walk our hands a little forwards. You might shift through that squat or start to walk yourself back to a tabletop position. And this time you can take the tops of your feet on the floor and sit on your heels. You might put a pillow in between your calves and your heels there as well. Or some of you might sit in between your feet in a hero's form. Whatever you choose, take your right thumb forwards and with your left hand, pull your thumb back and reach your fingertips towards the earth. So your body, your choice, you can find how much intensity you want in the stretch and the webbing in between your index finger and your thumb. And we'll switch sides, giving the left thumb a pull back as you stretch the fingers away from the webbing in between your index finger and your thumb. And then you can pull back on your left ring or uh, index finger and resist that a little bit by curling, trying to close your finger in towards your fist as you pull back. So there's a little bit of tension in the stretch and you can do that to all your fingers with a little resistance and exploring that stretch through the fingers. You can go into your other index finger and apply that little bit of resistance, getting curious about each finger. All the way to your pinky finger. And you can shake that out. I'm going to show you this way, taking your right hand down and your left hand up. So the palms face away from each other. Hook your left pinky underneath or all your fingers underneath your bottom hand. Stretch out through your thumbs and then with your bottom hand pull back so you get a stretch in the carpal tunnel and through your forearm. Now this one's a little tricky. <laughs> Can you keep that clasp a little loose and turn your palms to face each other? If that was tricky just take your left arm on top of your right and interlock your hands. <laughs> okay then you can Turn your palms up towards your heart. Pull your elbows apart and take your chin down towards your fists. And then take your right ear over your right shoulder. 
and your left ear over your left shoulder. And then come into the center. If you can keep this clasp really tenderly, squeeze your elbows together and try to feed your hands forward. So there's a bit of a torque on your top wrist. Sometimes I like to bounce into that a little bit. Some of you will have the mobility to straighten your arms. No need to force it. You can bump into that intense sensation. Get curious about it. And we'll release that. And then we'll go left hand down, right hand up, hooking underneath the fingers, pulling back into that carpal tunnel of the right. You can stretch out through both of your thumbs. Think about creating space in between the bones of your hands. And then here it's a little tricky, loose clasp, circle it so your palms face each other, or a right hand on top of your left hand clasp. Turn that up towards your chest. Pull your elbows apart so you feel stretch on the top of your hand. Tuck your chin and leisurely go side to side with your neck. Pulling your elbows apart as you do that. Then you can bring your elbows close and start to feed that forward so you can bounce into that torque through your wrists a little bit, maybe a lot. Explore it. <sighs> and release that out. You can shake that out. Think spaghetti through your fingers. And then if you make fists, you can round through your wrists, circularize through your wrists. Meatballs. <laughs> and then we'll come into a seat and cross our right leg in front of our left. You might elevate your seat here, or you can take your right shin on top of your left for more of a box shape. Wherever you land, walk it forwards until you feel a stretch through your backside. You can shift your position any amount. If you like, you can walk your elbows forwards and hold your temples, or sometimes I like to put a prayer shape with my hands and put my thumbs at my space in between my eyebrows. Finding that just right amount of stretch and a couple of breaths. You might come back to that pausing or suspension at the bottom of your exhale. And in that space, you might feel a little bit grounded to the earth. Some of you are welcome too to Come up in this shape and maybe take your hands behind you, interlock your hands. Open up your chest and come forwards any amount with a bit of a stretch through the collarbones and a movement sideways to your armpits. You can come on up from that and let her Legs come forwards before the other side. Walk your sit bones back, coming into your forward fold. So if you're feeling a lot of stretch um, in your back body and less in your hamstrings, you might bend your knees a bit and pull on your legs and then slowly start to straighten your legs a little more until you feel the pull on the back side of your legs. You might let your head hang.
Maybe your breath is a little softer, a little smoother, a little longer. And grounding your sitting bones to roll on up. You can take your fingertips behind you, open through your chest. Switching sides. So it's the left leg in front or on top. You can put something underneath your seat. Wiggle your seat back and start to shift forwards any amount. The yogis thought that the bottom of the exhale was a place where we could be more connected to fear as we're empty of breath and the inhale brings us back to life. And the yogis thought that if we lingered at the bottom of the exhale a little with a calm nervous system, we could kind of work with fear. So whatever resonates in that with you, you might explore it. If you like, you can come up and could take that inner lock behind you, wiggle open through your chest a little and come forwards, opening through your elbows and your collarbones and armpits. And you can come on up from that. And this time we'll take our legs forwards, but we'll widen them. I'm gonna turn this way on the mat <clears throat> so you can sit up on something and widen your legs any amount. Sometimes I like to put my legs up the wall and widen my legs that way as well, which can, if you're feeling pretty stiff in this, then it can be supportive for taking your back, a stiff back out of it. Or you can start to shift forwards, finding that just right amount of stretch. If it's earlier in the morning, this one feels a little more intense for me. So if that's you, you can move around in it a little bit. Sometimes this movement can be soothing. You can walk over to one side and then the other. You can even come up and twist over one leg. Some of you might bring your hands forwards like a downward dog, like you're throwing a ball and falling through through your fingertips as you let your belly come towards the earth. Here you can slowly make your way back up to a seat. Perhaps you take your outer knees and draw them in, curling in. And you're invited to come back onto your hands and your knees. And from that space, a little more wrist strengthening where we pop up onto the knuckles underneath our fingers and shift a little forwards and then slowly lower the heel of the hand back down. You can 
Do that a couple of times. Pop up, shift forwards with your armpits, and lower down. Something I like to do here is tuck my toes and in the up movement, sometimes I'll play with a little, maybe a lightening off of my knees or even a, a sh little shift forwards, really strengthening in this position. You can come down from that. You might shake out through your hands and then shift through to your low back. So we'll roll onto our low back and I'm gonna show you this. We'll roll over onto my left side. Take my right hand, internally rotate that a shoulder so my thumb points down towards the bottom of my mat. Take that up my back, maybe a little wiggle to see where it lands and then roll back onto my back. So I'm pinning my hand, palm face down, underneath me. And if it feels like it's pretty tender in the front of your shoulder, then you can lower your hand towards the small of your back or the base of your ribs. Some of you might be interested in kind of wiggling it up in between your shoulder blades. And something some of us might feel here, I certainly am, is a little winging of the shoulder blade into the earth. And that's okay if you're feeling that. You might think about widening your collarbone out to the side, widening your armpit out to the side as you let your body weight and this position do its magic on this internal rotation of the shoulder. Feel free to close your eyes and bring your attention to the bottom of the exhale if that's a space that you're sort of flirting with in this practice. So from here, you can lean over to the left to free your right arm, and we'll switch sides. So you can roll right to internally rotate your top arm, take your hand up your back, and roll back down onto it. And maybe you feel a big difference left to right. You can continue to widen your collarbone and your armpit out to the side on that internally rotated shoulder. Finding your breath and your body connecting to the earth. And then you can roll back over to your right and free your left arm. And we'll either roll onto your back for the meditation part of this class, or you're welcome to 
come up towards the seat and sit on a prop. If you're feeling tired, you can put your legs up the wall or find a lying down position that feels comfortable. You might close your eyes for this part or you can keep them open and let your eyes look down towards the floor. Perhaps letting your eyes be a little more still. You're welcome to drop into your weight, into your feeling of connecting to the earth. Something that feels supportive for me is to drop into my bones, the feeling of the heaviness of my bones and bring my awareness into the marrow of my bones, really letting my bones find gravity. You might be tuning into your breathing and feel free to linger at the very bottom of your exhale and explore that space. And if it brings you any sense of anxiety, you don't have to sit there or linger there, but if it, it's a place of curiosity, feel free to pause and suspend. Maybe your jaw gets a little softer, your eyelids get a little softer. Your shoulders get a little softer. And if there's anywhere in your body right now that hurts or that there's pain, maybe residual injury and stuckness of emotion, you're invited to breathe where it hurts. And letting your breath be a balm and a way to feel things all the way through. And to close this session, you might thank your body for doing its thing for another day. And 
and being alive is a good thing. I hope this was useful for you. Feel free to stay here for as long as you need to. Peace.